So pipes are something that can be a bit confusing for new Angular developers because they're quite unique to the Angular ecosystem. So in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a bit of a breakdown of what pipes are and how you can use them within your templates. So Angular pipes are a way of transforming data that you've got in your template into a different format. And there's some preset built in Angular pipes that you can make use of, or you can actually create your own as well. In this video, I'm just gonna show you some of the built in Angular pipes and how you use them in your templates. So we've got some data in our template at the moment and you can see we've got a title, we've got today's date, we've also got a balance property and also this transactions property which if we look on the app component are just actual member variables that are created for this component so all of the details are here so there's nothing special here they're just actual properties that are set up for our component to consume in the template. So let's take the title variable to start off with. It's just a string, but what if we wanted to make this all uppercase? Well, we could write a function to take the uh, a string in our component to then actually change it to be uppercase. So after we've created our properties here, we could create a function called make uppercase, which takes in that string and then does the necessary to actually return that as an uppercase string. And of course you could use CSS to make this change as well. But if we actually want to change the data that's being displayed on the template, then we can use an Angular pipe to actually transform this all into uppercase. So to use a pipe in Angular, we simply add a pipe symbol after the, the data that we want to transform, and then we give it the name of the pipe that we want to use. So in this case, there is one called uppercase that Angular has built in. And when we save the template, you'll notice that the title text is now all in uppercase and we haven't had to go to the actual title property in the component or use a function to actually make a change to this data. It's just been updated when this template is rendered. So that is how a pipe works. We put the data on the left-hand side and this can come from many sources, but in this example, it's just a property on the class. And then we use the pipe symbol to then pass the data uh, that's on the left-hand side into the pipe that we give it on the right-hand side. And so you're probably thinking, well, what kind of pipes can I use with Angular? Well, there are a few different ones built in, such as lowercase for our title, or if we wanted to make sure that the data that's being displayed is actually in title case as well, there is also a title case pipe as well, which will pretty much get our data back to where we had it in the first place. So there are a few different pipes provided by Angular. And if you go over to the documentation on angular.io, these are some of the pipes that you can make use of. Uh, there's one for dealing with async data coming from a network request, for example. We've got currency, date, decimal, JSON, and then the text processing ones that we looked at just a moment ago, such as lowercase and uppercase and title case. So let's have a look at a few more of these pipes and how they could be used in our template. So for example, the next thing that we've got on our page is today's date, uh, but maybe we want to format it in a different way. We want to customize the way that date is presented. So we've got the date string being passed in, but we want to actually change it into a different format. So the way we could do that is by using the Angular date pipe. And if we just do what we did before with the title, we can just pass in the today property that's inside of the class into the date pipe. And you can see when the page reloads, we've got a different date displaying, but we might want to actually customize how this date is displayed. So for example, maybe I want to show it as day, month, and year separated by forward slashes. So we can do that by providing an extra input into the date pipe which is provided after the date pipe name with a colon and then the string that I'm going to provide to it is the format that I want the date to be displayed in. So that's going to be day and then month and then we'll have the years after that. So to find out what the formatting is you'd go through the Angular documentation to actually see what the date formats are but you can see how here with the date pipe we can actually provide additional information to customize the way that the pipe works. And if you do go on to create your own pipes, you'll see how you can take various different inputs to customize the way that the pipe is going to format the data that's presented to it. So the next thing we've got on our page after that is the balance that's been displayed to the user, but this is just uh, an integer value, uh, but we might want to put in the currency after that. So we've got a currency pipe to do that. So we can just pipe in the balance into the currency pipe, and you can see the default is that it's showing the value in dollars, but again, you can customize this if you go through the documentation to see how the uh, value can be changed. And this is really useful if you want to change the actual currency based on a property that's set within your component. 
So for example, if we wanted to change it into the UK currency of pounds, we would just pass in the GBP uh, currency code, and you can see that the uh, symbol will change. And now this can be controlled via a property in our component. So we could say, uh, instead of just passing in the literal string here, we can have currency code, for example. It's going to give us an error because we need to set that up. But we could put this on the top of our uh, component here. So currency code, we'll set that equal to US dollars to start off with. And that should give us the dollar symbol. But then we can just flip that out easily when we need to, to change it for pounds. So that's just an example of how you can combine variables or properties in your class and your component and actually make use of them in your template to filter or change the way that the uh, pipes are processing the data. So let's have a look at one last example, which is these transactions that you can see at the bottom of the page here. And the transactions themselves, it's just an array with objects inside there with a date property and an amount, so simulating when a transaction might have happened. And you'll notice that in the actual output that we've got, from the template when we use template interpolation we just show object object in there which isn't very useful because we can't actually see the data in there so if you wanted a quick way to actually inspect the data that's inside of that transactions array we can just pass uh, the transactions property into the json pipe and it stringifies the actual data that's inside the array so you can actually see it being shown on the template but in reality, you probably wouldn't do this because you'd use an ng4 or something similar to actually loop through all of the transactions and then display each of the properties. But it's just another example of how Angular provides us with some pipes that can be used to process data. And if you are dealing with some JSON data, then obviously this pipe might be really useful for you to actually display that to the user. So that's a quick overview of using pipes in Angular. If you're interested in creating your own pipes to customize the way that your data is shown in a template, then you should check out this next video where we're going to go through how to create a pipe from scratch.